appreciate you being here. All right, so getting back, uh, obviously a tough loss up there in Raleigh. Um, watching film, thought our team played hard. Uh, we played, we were physical, um, played with toughness, but we, uh, defense played awesome. Defense certainly gave us a chance to win that game in so many different ways, but um, we, uh, we ran the ball pretty well, but we turned the ball over and we weren't very effective in the red zone and ended up being the difference in the game. So got back and uh, right to work right away. This team uh, certainly has shown some resiliency throughout the year when we have suffered a setback and it was no different in our return. And certainly there was a lot of uh, just energy and a lot of focus on preparing for Florida State this coming weekend. So questions, please. Mario, you mentioned on the radio this morning about like how you and the staff are constantly uh, assessing things and you were asked about Tyler and Emory. Um, does that kind of mean you guys are be looking at whoever has the best week in practice will get the start on Saturday or is it kind of business as usual when it comes to the quarterback? Yeah, well, you know, I, I appreciate the question and I would respectfully say this is just from a game planning standpoint and a team dynamic standpoint, I wouldn't use this form to, to discuss a personnel move, especially at that position, right? Because it affects so many different things. Uh, what I would always say is that we're always competing at every position. We're always assessing and we always make the decisions that give us the best chance to win. So again, respectfully, we kind of keep everything regarding, you know, personnel moves in house and tight. When you assess quarterback, quarterback play, how much do turnovers factor into your assessment on? We haven't, we've, we've struggled, you know, to your question. Uh, turnovers are, it's, it's cost us football games, right? So we, um, we have progressed as a team in so many different areas. In the last four weeks, we have, we have regressed in the passing game. You know, we have, and it's a, it's a combination of things. You know, there's no masking that. We certainly don't, don't sidestep that. So, um, and when you assess, you know, the passing game, you assess, you know, how does it relate to the running game? How does protection fit in? How does protection as it relates to the backs? How's the route running? So uh, it's a, a huge area of focus and it's tied into some of the turnovers that we've had as well. And it is a top priority for us. How do you feel like the receivers have been doing in recent weeks? Are they getting enough separation? Are they running the correct depths like you would want? I think sometimes we have, sometimes we haven't. I think there is effort and sometimes there's lapses. I think man coverage, at times we beat it, other times we get snugged up pretty good. Um, there's, there's progress and sometimes there's, there's lapses. I think there was improvement in effort this past week. Uh, when you play against a drop eight outfit, it's a little bit different, right? It's gonna be drop eight, it's gonna be man, some form of one or zero. Um, they play some, that's some of that cloud coverage too, when those are small, but um, I wouldn't point a finger at that position or any position in particular. I would put it on us as a whole, as an organization, you know, coaches and players, uh, everything. And I know it's a very generic and mundane answer. It's just this forum. Um, I like to give as much information as possible without ever fracturing what we believe in, which is make sure we own it, you know, as a whole. But do we need to improve there and everywhere else? Yes. Areas where you kind of progress a little bit. Where have you seen the team progress in the last few weeks? That's really like. Well, I think our running game against tough looks continues to get better. Those are tough yards. Um, I think we managed to do probably a better job getting the ball down the red zone than most squads against this last outfit. We knew it would be a grinder of a game. You know, the play count in the games against NC State have been low, uh, but we got down there three times and just outside of the red zone a fourth time we walked out with three points. You know, that's not good enough. Um, our defense continues to get better and better uh, against a run. We've been able to present multiple looks, uh, play multiple coverages, play a lot of different guys, uh, and we continue to get better there. Um, we played a lot of significant amount of young guys on special teams as well. Our coverage units have improved. You know, guys like Popo Geary making big tackles down there on kickoff. So, um, so we see all that stuff again, where we didn't see, uh, where we saw our regression was in the turnover department and uh, the ability to throw the football. I know there's not one way to do everything, obviously, but when you look at your contemporaries in the ACC, like Dotto was famous in, I think, six and seven, in year two. FSU under Mike was five and seven in the second year. Like, when you take over something, you know it's going to take years to get it exactly the way you need it to be. Do you look at blueprints from other places and, and look at 
the ebbs and flows of what goes on at other rebuilds when you're trying to put one together? I think we always, I always do. I always try to learn more and more in everything um, that we do as we put Miami to where it needs to be. Um, I like using the experience of being here before, the experience of going to Rutgers, the experience of going to FIU, the experience of going to Oregon. They were all very similar. You know, one was 4-8, and eight, one was 0-12, and 12, another one was 1-11. and 11. Um, So there's a lot of similarities. And then, of course, the experience up at Alabama were getting there and sustaining it is just as hard, maybe harder, right? And which is similar to the experience as a player, which is different, you know? But uh, without a doubt, you know, you look at – um, what, are the, what, are the, what are the common traits, right? What are the similarities in all those blueprints? And some of it is consistency, right? Systematic consistency, some of it, a lot of it is personnel, right? Talent acquisition, um, getting in one class after another, after another, making sure those classes have uh, continued to grow, mature, and develop when, you know, when those guys are juniors and seniors, um, you know, what that product looked like for those places and how different they were when they started. So, yeah, I think it's a, it's a constant, constant study, always trying to find ways to tweak and improve the blueprint that we have. Is there, is there, it's right, I know they all, every game counts the same. Your job is to win off the bottom with that. You know much, so much made, is made more of this week. And is, that, is the timing of this and what your team is going through right now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Dealing with, with the little adversity in a rivalry week, is, is that going to be I think it's always a good time for a rivalry game, right? It's what college football has always been and will always be about. And the intensity, the pageantry, the passion behind it is awesome. It's uncomparable. Uh, Mario, uh, Tyler's obviously had a rough past three days and very rough on social media. Um, how is he, it's very, I, even if he doesn't look at it, it's very tough to escape that now. How's he doing? He's good. He's tough. He's resilient. Um, I don't know how much social media affects him or, you know, people in general. So uh, that can never be a factor for it. That has nothing to do with the work that needs to be done, uh, the team itself, the areas to improve, teammates, goals, all that kind of stuff. So, but uh, he is very determined to be the best teammate he could possibly be and the best player he could possibly be. So he's being... Tyler Van Dyke. Okay, and the, the other thing is, uh, Brashard Smith had a had a good game against Clemson, um, but he's only got four touches from scrimmage since that game. Well, um, why isn't he getting more opportunities? Is there a reason? I think there's there's a concerted effort to get him more opportunities. You know, early in the game last week, uh, we tried him on the slot fade, and that thing didn't hit. It's certainly part of the game plan. Uh, he's been a really good player for us, especially when he gets the opportunity to get out there in space and do some things. But uh, it's not, uh, it's certainly not out of design where he's not getting the ball. In fact, it's the opposite. You know, there's plenty of play design to try to get him the ball. The ball just hasn't found its way there. So, um, Jaden and Daryl both left the game on Saturday. Do you have any status updates on them? Jaden is doing really, he's doing, per, he's fine. He's perfect. Um, Daryl was a little bit off on Saturday, but we feel very optimistic about him. He looked pretty good today. Uh, same thing like Ray Ray, uh, Elijah Arroyo, and AJ Allen both held out on Saturday too. Ray Ray looked really good today, so we expect him to be a full go. AJ looks good today, expect him to be a full go, and I believe Arroyo, we'll see him later today, but we feel optimistic he'll be a full go as well. You kind of go to running back, it seems like, and some of it's been because of guys get banged up a little bit, mm -hmm. but you've had the hot, like the hot hand of three or four different, three or four different guys have been the hot hand at times this year. On one hand, that's good, you've got the guys who that sort of potential. On the other hand, for week to week, you don't know who the guy is. How, how difficult is that? It hasn't been because it's it's played itself out. You know, we really don't. We're not big at running back. You know, Fletcher is Fletcher's large man. You know, and, and Cheney's got some size to him, but we're not like overly imposing at running back. So um, they run hard. You know, we really emphasize running hard and um, certainly securing the football. So it's uh, because those guys do. You know, they, they, they run into loaded boxes and they take on safeties and they got to be involved in protection. If they do get banged up and they, they are forced to miss some time, we feel very confident in the next man up just because there's been so much, um, I would say, there hasn't been enough separation, right? And I believe this past week, Mark Fletcher certainly showed something different because that that's a very difficult 
team to run the ball against. And you saw some of the the contact plus two, three, even four yards, some of the arm tackles he'd run through. Um, I mean, he was flat out impressive. Watching film earlier on, just what stands out about this FSC team, a team that's you know really similar to a last year's team? A very upperclassman-laden team, uh, very talented, um, very stout, big, strong at the line of scrimmage, and very explosive at the skill positions. Quarterback certainly a difference maker. Coach, in a matchup that has lasted 72 years and, you know, for it to be a very important environment for your team to play well under, it's a fourth-ranked team in the nation. What do you feel is the most important thing to prepare your team as, you know, you're a former player kind of facing that environment as well? Mm -hmm. The intensity behind practice and preparation is always the most important thing. You've got to be able to win your Monday, Tuesday, your Monday through Friday, right? Because your practice and preparation is going to end up being your game reality. And then come game time, making sure that that practice and preparation makes its way onto the field in the form of high level execution and in the form of making sure that you're not creating your own turnovers, that you're not having um, penalties that you, know, you could avoid. So being able to execute at a high level with a lot of passion, play really, really hard, play really physical, finish plays and, um, and play together. I know you try to say this way at all times, but in here it is. In here it is. Do you find that the juice is getting, even at your highly caffeinated level, do the juices get a little hot this week? They're always hot, you know. I mean, you got to, when, when I come into this forum here, I got to, you know, professionally cover a lot of information. I got to make sure that I'm as transparent as I can be without ever, like I mentioned earlier, affecting a team dynamic, because that, that's the most important part, you know, the locker room as we continue to develop and grow and whatnot. But, um, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a former football player, man, you know? I mean, I love this game to the death. It's the DNA, it's life's blood, it's, you know, the best thing in the world, you know, of course, besides family and faith and all that, you know, it's, to us, like we talked about teams today, why, why are we pissed? Why are we frustrated? Because we live and die to be a Miami Hurricane. So we care. It hurts. And the only response that we have is to get back to work. That's the only response we've seen from this team, which is awesome to see. Wouldn't expect and wouldn't want and wouldn't accept anything else. In my league, I used to transfer the portal incredibly up there to get themselves back on the map, so to speak. Um, I think like 60% of their transfers are starting for them. Uh, talk a little bit about that. So are they the prototype for the transfer portal? They've done a great job with the transfer portal. They have uh, several guys in several positions uh, that are our transfer portal acquisitions. So that's, uh, they've done a great job of identifying and acquiring transfer portal prospects that, again, are, have a lot of experience, you know, are in the junior and senior realm. I mean, on their, their offense, you know, Jordan Travis, speaking of transfers, Jordan Travis, Caleb Coleman, Trey Benson, is done. How difficult was it to stop those guys? Obviously, you know, saw them last year, uh, had the difficulty against them. Those are, those are really high-level players. They're as good as you'll find in the country, and they play really, really hard. Marty, right, what did you learn? Uh, a year and a half into the ACC, are you getting ready to face the next, the, the leaders of the ACC in Louisville next week? Just what have you learned about the conference itself? Very competitive. Um, every team has really good players. Quarterback play in this conference is really, really high. Uh, defensive linemen in this conference, you'll find a lot of, which I, there's not a ton of conferences that have high level defensive linemen. I think every single week you see a high level one here. Uh, schematically, you'll see some pretty significant differences week to week. Like last week, I don't know if there's ever, I don't know if there's a team out there um, in the other conferences I've had a chance to coach and that plays that particular defense, you know? Uh, so there's, it's, uh, it's almost like a different flavor every single week, but some high level professionalism, some good coaching and some really good players. Mario, you, you were saying that the shoe rivalry with UM is, is, I guess, is special, obviously. Um, can you expound on that a little more about this rivalry and how well, so many kids know each other, grew up with each other, or what makes this one a little more? I think it's the best one. I just, you know played in it, coached in it, and I think it's the best one. There is intensity unmatched, so. Do you worry that it's going to be a little too intense, you know, that they have to tone it down a little? If I, 
You know, I think, uh, I think it's important to play on passion as opposed to emotion, right? Emotion could kind of go up and down and lead you to maybe overthink or not think or whatnot. Um, but in terms of, you know, I think the energy and the juice behind it take care of itself. Um, we got to make sure we do, and everybody, to do a really good job on focusing on what to do, how to do it, why to do it that way. Assignment football, you know, and let the intensity and the passion take care of itself. And then what memories do you have from, from playing in Tallahassee? Uh, the best. Yeah, you know, intense, physical, knockdown, drag out games. Um, always, always what you circle your calendar for, you know, in the summertime. And uh, was fortunate enough to be part of some unbelievable, unbelievable games. You know, it's, you always, always loved football, always loved the opportunity I got at the University of Miami. And we, we lived, lived for that game every year. It's kind of, more, kind of silly ones, I apologize, but you played a bunch of night games this year. You know, that's a good question. I think I think teams are different. You know, some teams like to get up and hit the ground running. You know, eat a PB and J and go to the field and play ball. Other ones they uh, they like being under the lights. You know, others like the in between. You know, I uh, I love noon games. I do. I like getting up and going. Um, I don't like, uh, just don't like sitting around. You know, I don't want to watch other to me. It's like we tell our team when we play on Saturday, it's the only game that matters. So I don't really care about watching other games. I want to, I want to go play ours. The importance of this game, just from a high school recruiting standpoint, how big is this game in, in that regard? I think this game, I think all games, I think the season, I think watching programs progress, I think they're all, they all factor in, you know. I think um, I think recruits are always watching, right? They're watching to see, hey, does it are the things that we are seeing when we visit a place are they being validated by some of the things that they're doing on Saturdays? You know, from a personnel standpoint, from a accomplishment standpoint, a progress standpoint, a particular position and their you know their results. So I think uh, I think recruits are always watching, you know. And they're watching for consistency, for honesty, and for truth.